Hello and welcome to Spirit Hunters. It's a game in the vein of Vampire Survivors, but a little bit different. Instead of evolving individual weapons by combining different things to morph it into something completely new, instead you have just a bunch of different weapons that can scale infinitely with somewhat generic stats like damage, CDR, attack size, number, and speed. Now that might not sound super interesting, but it actually makes for some very compelling gameplay after you've unlocked a few things. The game starts off extremely slow, but once you get a little bit of meta progression done, it makes a big difference. The biggest thing is unlocking the pets first thing on the Divinity web, which I'll show you in a second. But I'm just gonna give you a preview of the second level, me clearing it or trying to clear it, and what the game eventually becomes. So you can see how it gets to be eventually, because when you first start, you're like, eh, meh but it gets pretty fun. Um, so right now I'm running a tornado and vine patch build um, where I've just made these vine patches and these tornadoes absurdly big and absurdly, um, like an absurd number of them. So uh, choices here, I can scale the size further, increase it from 25 to 26. So just make it a little bigger or I could add extra damage onto those as enemies walk across them. It does damage over time. We'll do the extra damage. It's 13 damage a tick is pretty big um as you can see my tornadoes are one-shotting things with 12 or 13 damage or close to one-shotting things uh things in this game don't have tons and tons of health like in the hundreds is the most i think probably anything has and that'd be bosses so you know 10 13 damage is quite a lot um for just regular monsters you can see these knights are super tanky and we're actually killing those so it gets it gets pretty nuts as you can see um this is the very end of a very successful build and very successful run it does not always go like this it certainly is a very very difficult game um, but it is a lot of fun so you should definitely check it out the the runs end at 15 minutes by the way so we are about five seconds away from the boss see if i can get Possibly one more level before he comes in here. I don't think so. Oh, okay, he's here. Who do we got? This is the first time I've fought this guy. Okay, it's a knight on a horse who has lots of knight ads. It's a little spooky, but thankfully, we do have tornadoes to help keep us alive. Unfortunately, I'm running into a problem where these walls slowly close in on you. And once it... If you touch the wall, you die, basically. The boss tries to charge and force you into a wall as well, so... Hopefully I can just keep the boss perpetually knocked back here and... Yeah, hey, actually, that was the easiest boss I've ever done. Tornadoes! And you can see all kinds of goodies. Um, these are your meta progression for unlocking new skills. This is your meta progression for unlocking new major keystones and characters and abilities. Sorry, this is skill power-ups. This is abilities and characters. So, successful run. Yay, first time I beat in that level. Uh, this is the Divinity Web. Very similar to like a Path of Exile web, but much, much simpler. Um, you have to start in the center and work your way out. It becomes very manageable. So far, I have unlocked the Vines and the Tornadoes are new abilities that you don't start with. I also unlocked the Bone Shot, which is a new ability. Not super impressed by the Bone Shot. It's okay for killing bosses. The Tornadoes are amazing crowd control and just fantastic. The Vines are really subpar until you get full investment into them. But once you get full investment into them, they're pretty good. I've also unlocked this new character who is a slow moving tanky character who doubles the size of like everything. He's actually pretty fun, but very hard to play in that last level. Um, oops, I accidentally unlocked something I didn't mean to. I was trying to click and drag. Dang. All right, that's fine. Uh, definitely want to unlock the last boost to tornado damage. You can see not only does it have a rune cost, but it also has like a mini quest um, that you have to complete before you can do it. So I had to beat this mini boss, the Cactus Inferno, three times before I could buy that. Um, similarly, I don't know if it's going to show you on these other ones. Yeah, so like on this one, I have to defeat the slimes X number of times, which I've done. I actually do kind of like the fire thing, so I'll probably grab that upgrade eventually. Um, cactus, we have to beat X number of times, etc., etc. But yeah, so it's it's pretty interesting. Um, haven't fought the Banshees yet, so I can't actually unlock the Shuriken. I'm assuming they're in the next level. 
I have beat the Fairy Warrior, so let's go ahead and unlock the Grand Hex ability. Haven't seen that one yet. That'll be cool. Over here, this way, you got kind of like various things that just help you on the account side, right? There's another ability. Uh, hero damage. I haven't even unlocked that currency yet, so I'm assuming that's a little bit down the line. There's another pet you can unlock. Oh, yeah, this game has pets that you can get as you go. So the very first thing you should do on your meta progression is unlock the pets. Once you've unlocked the pets, things get a lot easier. But in addition to unlocking the pets, it also opens up the ability to unlock other levels and the loot magnet, which makes it easier to get the orbs, which is one of the more frustrating things in the beginning. So those three upgrades are your first three upgrades for meta progression. As far as ability upgrades go, I would invest in personally, I would probably invest in the spears or the orbital fire choose one or the other to specialize in to start and then later as soon as you can after you've unlocked these three you definitely want to unlock the tornadoes because they are extremely extremely good um so yeah that's kind of the progression system within the game when you're looking at who you're going to play you have characters i have lots of characters i haven't unlocked yet each character has their own unique ability on the side and then their own unique take on the uh particular spell that you have selected as their starting selection so for instance magnus is a character based around healing so whenever he takes an orbital fire upgrade he gains 10 hp but she vivian is a person built around uh gathering lots of resources so her passive is that her soul magnet which is what sucks in your uh, experience levels up by five percent each time she gains a level and now her orbital fire instead of healing when you grab an upgrade has a 25 percent chance to drop extra blue souls which is the experience so you can see she's built around experience he's built around self-recovery he regenerates 10 health on level up as well this guy is built around making things big <laughs> so his orbital fire is 50 percent bigger he deals he has extra health has extra damage and mitigation but moves slower right and it's the same same is true for each of these things like they each have their own unique take on different things and they're all kind of similar themed right um but there are some differences like for instance the vines for him suddenly hey he has a healing option you know um for her the one that's kind of different is the vines again increasing in size instead of giving extra resources so that's kind of interesting um for him it's chance to drop hearts and stuff. But yeah, so it's different for each one. So let's see what our new ability does. Cast a large and powerful explosive energy onto the battlefield. Heal one HP every time you cast it. Okay. Uh, her version of that is all kills with Grand Hex will drop a blue soul. That's pretty good. That's the same thing she has for the tornado and it's super good for her. Okay, let's see what his is. 2 HP heal every time it's cast. So interesting. That could actually be a nice way for him to get some self-healing. Um, so let's go ahead and just do a real quick preview to see what it looks like in action. I think I will probably go with her on this particular run because having lots and lots of blue souls at the beginning sounds great. So let's go ahead and do that. We have not yet unlocked the next level. Let's actually have a look at the Divinity Web, see if I can. Not entirely sure where it would be is the problem here. I feel like it'd be down this way. Hmm. I'll search for it later. It's around here somewhere. The one thing this game could use is a search bar for sure. That would be very, very, very handy. An extra shop appearing on the battlefield would be pretty good too. But as long as you plan, it's fine. Okay, uh, so let's go and take him in to... The desert is the first level you beat. Um, Highlands is a bit harder. So let's go and try that. It also gives you extra resources. So there's a reason to do it in addition to just the challenge, right? You can see right away, he moves a lot slower, right? We have to just kind of wait for the first cast to go off and then make our way over to it. Okay, cool. That's fairly reasonable time um, it takes to go off. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Actually, that's gonna be really good. 
Um, let's increase the damage by three. Oh, shoot. I meant to go with the other person. I meant to go with the, the chick who harvests the souls. Oh, well, it's fine. Um, orbital fire seems to make sense here because we're luring them into a circle, right? So we already want them to kind of come into our little circle. Um, same with the Tangled Vines, just we'll do a Venn Diagram build here. We'll just do lots and lots of circles. We'll increase the speed of our Orbital Fire so it goes a little bit quicker. And then remember, each time that X cast, we gain two life back, which is pretty handy. Uh, not really an option here that fits our circle theme, so we'll just grab Spears because it's random damage that's always helpful. It always hits. <clears throat> I dig making the vine patches stronger, because they can actually do a lot of work once they get fully leveled up. I would like to try to do a run without the tornado. Okay, so this is a high damage ability, it looks like. I'm hoping we'll get the ability to scale its size. Because if we could do that, it could actually end up being pretty powerful. Cooldown reduction on our circle, our Grand Hex. So this starts ramping up and getting a bit crazy around the time you see start seeing the rats spawn, which should be very soon. One thing this uh, particular Bullet Heaven rewards you for is exploring. So you don't really want to do what I'm doing right now, which is just staying in one place and dancing around. You really do want to kind of run around the map and look for things because there are crates all over the place <clears throat> that drop hearts and gold and gems and various other things. And there are various events that you can do that make you stronger as well. So you have a lot of incentive to explore. So we're going to start doing that now that I've got kind of a little bit of a handle on what I'm going to be doing here. And crates have hearts in them sometimes too, which can heal you. So even more reason to explore. Remember, we take less damage on this character, so it's okay to take a few hits, especially because we're slower. We don't really have a lot of a choice sometimes. Yeah, it does a lot of damage. We haven't even invested in it yet, and it does like 13. Wow, just crit for 33 at one shot a night. I don't know if I've ever seen that. That's crazy. It's kind of looking to find our first pet or treasure chest or something along those lines that so we can get a little bit stronger. All right, 5% crit chance increase, so up to 8% crit chance on our hex. I'll take it. There's another crate. Wonderful. Just kind of trail these knights behind us. They take a lot to kill. Um, okay, here's where things get really difficult. The rams start coming into the picture. And they hurt. Okay, we have our first chest. Try and make our way over to that. Slowly but surely. Let's increase our damage on our vines. Try to dodge as much as we actually can. There's some things we're just not going to be able to dodge right now. We're just going to have to tank some of it. Oh, increase size. Yes, please. Give me that. I'm taking a little more than I would like. <laughs> okay, we can't take much more of this. It's kind of being crazy. Okay, got our first chest. Cooldown rate. Yeah, we're going to be dead, I think. I don't think we have a way out of this. We need something to be able to knock them back. We do need tornadoes, I think. Or some form of knockback, at least. Definitely cannot go with what I have here. Let's just go increase the number of spears. Yeah, it's just not sufficient. Hopefully we get a lot of healing out of these chests here. And it saves our life. Nope. 
Oh, there's a healing thing right there. But anyway, you kind of get the idea. It can be very difficult, but it can be very, very fun. You guys should definitely check it out if you get a chance. If you like Vampire Survivors at all, you should check this out. I have played a decent amount of Vampire Survivors in the last few weeks. I could upload some videos for that, too. Um, but yeah, you should definitely check this game out if you have not already. It is well worth your time. A little bit painful at the beginning to get invested, but once you do, it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.